Hi, welcome to my channel To Irrational. I'm Pranesh Sharma, and in this video, we'll learn what factorials are and what fundamental principles of counting is. Let's talk about factorials. If we take multiplications of integers as one into two, that gives us two. One into two into three, that gives us six. One into two into three into four, that gives us twenty-four. Similarly, one into till five will give us one twenty. One till six will give us seven twenty. As we can see, these multiplications start becoming large values very quickly and become difficult to represent. So we represent it using factorials. We say this is two factorial, three factorial, four factorial, five factorial, and six factorial. We can also use one factorial as one, and also zero factorial as one. Why zero factorial is one is a topic for another video. You can take it as a lower limit of factorials. We may use two symbols to represent factorials, although exclamation is the most widely used, and we will use it too. N here is the number to which we are multiplying, starting from one. This is a good way to represent the large multiplications with small symbols. Factorials has a limitation that it can only be calculated for positive integers. We cannot calculate for negative values, and we cannot calculate it for non-integer values. Now, n factorial can be written as multiplications of n to one, and this part will represent n minus one factorial. So, n factorial can be written as n into n minus one factorial. We can take it one step further and say it is also n into n minus one into n minus two factorial. Similarly, you can do it for something like five factorial. You can write it as five into four factorial, or you can write it as five into four into three factorial, and so on. We can use these simple concepts to solve basic sums involving factorials. In the first sum, you can see five factorial can be written as five into four factorial. Then, if we take four factorial common, we are going to get nothing but four into four factorial. You can write four factorial as twenty-four and then simplify it more further. But I'll leave it here. For the second example, I'll get nine factorial as nine into seven, eight into seven factorial. And then I can cancel out seven factorials to get nine into eight, that is seventy-two. For the third one, I can write ten into nine into eight into seven into six factorial and cancel out six factorial from the denominator, and then expand my four factorial also and cancel out the specific terms to get two hundred and ten. So in this manner. You can use lower factorial values, common factorial values that you can cancel out or take common for solving these kind of sums. Factorials are used to calculate total ways of doing a job, or let's call it counting. Let's talk about fundamental principles of counting. The first is addition. If I have two ways of traveling through road transport, let's say car and bus. And other ways of traveling are train, plane, and ship. In total, I will have five ways of transport. I can say here the number of ways of road transport were two, the number of ways of other transport were three, but in total, I got two plus three, that is five ways of traveling. So when we have alternatives of the same job. We add the ways of doing them. That is the first fundamental principle of counting. The second principle is multiplication. For example, if I move from A to B and then B to C, where I can only use road transport to move from A to B and other transports from B to C, in how many ways can I move from A to C? I can take car and then train, or car and then plane, or car and ship. 
and similarly I'll have three options with bus as well. In total, I have six options to travel from A to B and then to C. That is nothing but 2 into 3 that is our number of road transport into number of other transports. When we do multiple jobs together, we multiply the ways of doing them. Let's take an example. In this example, out of 15 boys and 13 girls in a class, one student is to be selected and in second we have one girl and one boy is to be selected. In how many total ways can this be done? So for the first one, the 15 boys and 13 girls are nothing but alternatives of that one student that can be selected. So in total, I can select one student from either 15 boys or 13 girls. So I will add them together. So whenever we have or in our language or in our logic, we use addition, we'll add them up. So I will have 28 options for that student to be selected. Now for the second part, I have to choose one girl and one boy. So for that one girl, I have 13 options. For one boy, I have 15 options. I'm doing them together. That is why I want to select one girl and one boy. So in total, I will have 13 into 15 number of ways that gives us 195 ways of selecting one girl and one boy from 13 girls and 15 boys. Using these fundamental principles, we can figure out the ways of arranging unique items. For example, let's arrange these three colors in all possible ways. We get six ways, that is three factorial. And if I add one more color, the number of ways jumps to 24, that is four factorial ways. This can be explained by a simple logic of counting options to fill spaces. Now I will assume I have four spaces to fill with four colors. For the first space, I have all four options. As we fill our first space with the first color and assume we cannot repeat the same color, we will have only three options left for the second space two option for the third space and only one option to fill the last space. These are nothing but options or you can say number of ways to fill each spaces. These are separate jobs to be done together. We will multiply the way of doing them and get four factorial ways to do them. Same as we found when we list each ways of writing those colors. Hence, we say that we have n factorial ways to arrange n unique items without replacement. So for example, I will have three factorial ways to arrange these three letters to form three letter words or 15 factorial ways to arrange 15 students of a class in a queue. Now, if we allow for repetitions, then cases become slightly different. Like for the letters that we were talking about, if we are allowed to use repeated letters, then in each one of these cases, we are going to have three choices for three letters. And the possible values we'll get is going to be three raised to three. For let's say, if we are tossing a coin five times, then for each one of those five cases or five spaces, we are going to have two choices, whether heads or tails. So the total number of ways is going to be two into two into two into two into two, that is two raised to five. So when repetitions are possible, the simple formula can be taken as the number of choices we had for a particular job raised to the number of spaces we are filling here. So these were the basics of selection or what we call it as counting. For complex ways of counting, we see permutation and combination that we'll see in the next video. If you like this video, please like, share and subscribe and do let me know what kind of videos would you like me to make more. I'll see you in the next one.